Okay, this chapter we're going to read is called Chapter 12, Food and Conversation. The last chapter called Guests. If you remember that Murray and the babies are guests at Kona's house, and Kona's trying to keep them quiet, especially Murray. And Murray was found in the kitchen because remember that Murray really likes to eat. Chapter 12, Food and Conversation. For the next few days, while Kona and Gwendolyn tried to figure out how to find Stumpy, bags of nacho chips, boxes of after-dinner mints, jars of crunchy peanut butter, and the occasional chocolate bar with almonds kept disappearing mysteriously from the kitchen. Poor Professor Albert. He would stand in front of the refrigerator or in front of the pantry, scratching his head in confusion. He would tell himself that he was not getting senile that he just thought he had bought that bag of chips or that jar of peanut butter. No cans of lima beans or spinach ever disappeared. It was as if some force in the universe wanted Professor Albert to eat only healthy things. And he still couldn't figure out why Kona was so nervous every time they watched Jeopardy. Things certainly had seemed odd since that ice storm. But Professor Albert's problems were nothing compared to Kona's. The dog was constantly going through the house picking up empty potato chip bags and can or candy wrappers. If Professor Albert found these, he would surely think that Kona was the one taking his food, and Kona certainly was not the one. You have to clean up after yourself, Murray, Kona would say to the bat. Oh, sorry, Kona, Murray would answer, but I was just watching Days of Our Lives through the heat vent, and I was so upset about Daniel and Laura that I forgot those Milky Way wrappers. Daniel was such a rat. Still, in spite of his hectic life and his worries about Stumpy, Kona was enjoying having Murray and the babies at his house, and late night was the best time of all. Long after Professor Albert had gone off to bed, complaining again that he just couldn't understand what an entire bag of chip, Chips Ahoy could disappear to, and speculating that another one of those pesky chipmunks was sneaking in, Kona, finally, Kona, finally able to relax, would softly pad over to Gwendolyn's bowl, pick her up gently in his mouth, and the two would sneak down into the basement. Murray, being nocturnal, was always wide awake and usually swinging by his feet somewhere. When Kona and Gwendolyn appeared, he would do a little somersault and land with his wings outspread. Ta-da! He'd sing, so who's got the Pepsi? Top, Bottom, and Sparrow would lift their little heads and look up from the box at Gwendolyn. Oh dear, oh dear, such pretty babies, the, qu the crab would fuss. Such chubby little legs, and is that a tooth you have, Mr. Bottom? Gwendolyn's antenna moved wildly in the air. Kona beamed with joy. He loved the babies, too. Then the friends would all gather around the box in the quiet night. Murray told vampire jokes. Why do vampires brush their teeth in the morning? To fight bat breath. Gwendolyn read everyone's palm. And Kona told them again the story of his icy journey in Gooseberry Park. They all loved to hear it. There's a picture of Murray telling his jokes and Gwendolyn reading one of the baby's palms. When Kona told them about the cat who strolled across the Oldsmobile, Murray said, I know that cat. His name is Conroy. He eats Chinese too. Plus French, Italian, Canadian, anybody will do. The bat cracked up over his joke. And at times they were serious and wistful. Do you think she'll find us? Kona asked. I'm certain of it, dear Gwendolyn answered. I can feel it in my bones. You have bones? Murray asked the crab. Figure of speech, Murray, said Kona. Figure of speech. And after an hour or two of good food and conversation, Kona began to yawn. How can you be sleepy, Murray asked. It's only three o'clock. Even I'm a bit drowsy, Gwendolyn said, smiling at the bat. I think it may be due to all this lovely food you provided. She gestured to the graham crackers, the raisin bread, and the banana chips scattered about. We didn't even get to the pretzels and bean dip yet, said Murray. Kona and Gwendolyn bade their friend good night, kissed the babies, and returned upstairs. Kona eased Gwendolyn down into her bowl then looked through at her through the glass. Each night he said the same thing. I hope Stumpy finds us. And each night Gwendolyn's answer was the same. She will.